it's finally here. I have been waiting since episode one to drop today's episode. Dark Mode in the Tanium console is finally here. And I'm so excited to share it with you guys today. And we've got a special guest, a designer from Tanium is here to tell us all about Dark Mode and how it works. But first, we have some housekeeping. So literally housekeeping in my office. All right. Some of you have asked, what is this white tube behind McGlone over there uh, in the office? Some of you guessed, is it a hot water tank? Is it a missile? Well, it's neither one of those. And several of you have guessed correctly, it is a, a telescope. It is actually a vintage, probably late 80s, early 90s, uh, so, you know, several decades old. It's a Mead Starfinder 8-inch telescope. I started a hobby of astrophotography a couple years ago, and I thought I would just show you what that stuff looks like. So, uh, just, so those of you who like astronomy, you can nerd out with me here for a second. So these are pictures that I've actually taken, uh, not with that telescope, with, but with my other gear, taken several moon shots. This is like an 8% crescent uh, one night. Here's a 17% crescent. But then I've got things like the Lagoon Nebula, uh, the Pleiades constellation there, uh, Orion and the Running Man Nebula. I've got uh, Andromeda Galaxy. And then uh, the Milky Way. Who doesn't love Milky Way, right? So, oh, and then uh, recently, this is with my latest gear. This is the Veil Nebula. It's like a, a supernova remnant, right? So anyway, those are some uh, pictures. And the reason I'm showing you those, because this is the dark mode episode. And I like spending some time outside in the dark when it's quiet, relaxed, after hours, playing with my gear. I've got an, I've got a, a Raspberry Pi mounted under my telescope now that controls all the gear. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, so uh, just for those of you who like to nerd out in the dark, uh, I'm an astronomy nerd. So uh, send some stuff to the chat room over there in community or hit me up on Twitter and let's talk about uh, astrophotography. But anyway, we're here to talk about dark mode and the Tanium console. And I have a special guest here today. Joe, introduce yourself, Joseph. Hey, Ashley, thanks for having me today. My name is Joe Sherpa. I'm one of the UX designers here at Tanium, and it's a pleasure to introduce the work uh, that represents uh, some really great design work done by members of our design team and implemented by our Stellar development team. And we're going to show you we've been waiting a long time to release this, and the day's finally here. This is fantastic. You know, I have dark mode enabled in every single application where it's possible. Uh, from my code editor to my mail client, everywhere I can enable dark mode is there. So finally, you've asked for it, and now we're finally able to deliver on dark mode in the Tanium console. So Joe, uh, without any further ado, why don't you walk us through the console and show us what it takes to turn this on and what it looks like. All right, let's do it. One of the things we're finding is people who weren't even dark mode fans prior to this dark mode release, we've converted them they've switched over to dark mode and they've said they'll never go back. So here I'm showing you our default blue star theme, which we recently released. And to change to dark mode, navigate to your user preferences and choose the new interface theme and choose dark. We'll save that. Drum roll. There it is. Woo, all right, dark mode. So you'll not only see some new changes with the dark experience, but you might've noticed some subtle transitions. Our UX team has been trying to add some pleasant nuance to the experience. We've added some nice subtle animations here. Uh, you'll also notice if I navigate over here to asset, you'll see some more subtle loading indicators as data is coming into the experience. We've really smoothed out some of the transitions between states. We've also made improvements with speed. So if you navigated into an item like a chart from the home page or an overview page within a module, you'll notice the performance is a lot faster now as well. Wow, that just, that looks so hot. That, that red Tanium logo on the back, black backdrop, the subtle grays and blues. What goes into a change like this, Joe? So why, why does it take so long? Why can't you just like 
flip all the colors somewhere on the opposite of the color wheel or something. I mean, is it really that hard to change colors in an interface? Well, that's a great question. If we were starting from scratch, building an interface right from the ground up, we can make decisions where you could have a one-to-one -one color mapping for the components. But Tanium has been around for a long time and we've iterated very quickly. We've been adding a lot of great functionality and delivering new modules over time as well. And as a result of that, we were starting with an experience that already had a lot of intricate interactions. The Blue Star release elevated to a, a very modern and refreshed UI, but you'll notice a lot of times we have components that sit on top of one another. And in order, if, if we were to just say, let's take one color and give it a dark color equivalent, you have to think about all those different states that that color exists in. So in some cases, that color may sit on a container like you see down here in the module section, and there's a subtle transition when you hover over. So there's a lot of different cases where once you go to dark mode, if it was just one to one, that color wouldn't always work. So we have to look at all of the different places where color was interacting with these different layers of nested containers. And that was inherently the challenge in, in getting something that worked uh, across the board where we didn't have deviation from one module to the next. You'll notice with our dark mode theme, it is consistent whether you're on the Tanium homepage, whether you're in console, or whether you're in an old or a new module. I know one of the other things related to color that's come up over the years before we even got to dark mode was color blindness. Not everybody can see all the same colors. Does that affect dark mode also? So we did validate the dark mode theme with some users, and we did tweak some things here and there. Um, setting up this new theming does pave the way to even go beyond with more accessible colors in the future. When making the decisions, we also tried to take into account not just going for uh, too much contrast, right? Oftentimes it's really easy to say, all right, well, I'm just going to make the text be really bright and make it sit in a really dark background. That can actually cause some eye strain because the contrast is a little too strong. Mm. Um, what we've achieved here with this blue star, or what we've achieved here with this dark mode experience is a nice balance between uh, effective contrast, but not making it be too strong or uh, inducing too much eye strain on the user. Wow, that's nice. Um, so let's go through some of your favorite spots then. Uh, clearly there's a lot to happen here. I'm thinking about some of the more colorful modules with charts and things. Maybe you could walk us through some examples of the more colorful parts. Sure, one of my favorites is Reveal. Reveal has some really great charts right on the homepage. And as we hover over these charts, you'll notice a nice translucent effect where the chart kind of bleeds through a little bit on the hover. We'll also take a look at Impact. Impact has a nice visualization that maps out connection hops that an endpoint makes. So let's find an endpoint here. We'll go to Impact Details. So I'm selecting an endpoint, and we'll see this nice visualization appear. Another subtle interaction experience we added here was you can now pin your sidebar, and this will stay persistent as you navigate through the interface. And you can close it if you like. And then if you just wanted to get to it quickly, you can hover, right? So if you wanted to have maximized real estate, you could close that left navigation, and then pin it. So that's something uh, recently introduced as well. Nice. I think we've all been there when that bar decides on its own when it wants to show up sometimes. <laughs> that's sure. great. How about the trends module? I know there's yeah, a Yeah, let's take a look at trends. Take a look. So here's our trends overview page. And we have a nice new set of charts, uh, donut charts, line charts, area charts. Take a look at some trends boards. Yeah, I can see that uh, as soon as this drops, it's going to be enabled all over the world. <laughs> right, all of our internal demos, uh, we see developers just working in dark mode. Designers are designing in dark mode now. Uh, it, we really love it and uh, there's no going back at this point. Yeah, that's going to be default for a lot of people. So I notice when, so let's go back to the user preferences where you enabled that. So we go under username preferences. And today the interface theme, that's the box. Now we've got default and dark. 
is you kind of hinted that there might be something else down the road. Are we planning other themes as well? Not currently, although the work that we did sets the stage to allow for that in the future. Okay, cool. So um, I've also heard that with this release or maybe some other recent releases, there are a number of other UI enhancements that are following on that Blue Star promise of enhanced ease of use and so forth. Could you show us some of those? Sure. So let's jump into our console and take a look at scheduled actions. We now have a bulk edit feature. So you can select multiple actions and edit, as well as a bulk reissue feature. Nice. That's handy. I mean, how many times have you wanted to reissue a bunch of actions to fire at the same time? So we got bulk edit and reissue. All right. What else we got? Let's take a look at client status. You can now deploy actions against endpoints selected in the client status view. All right, so that's a big deal. That's a really big deal. People have been asking for this for a long time. Now you can actually go in here and check the box. You've got all these filters down the right side that you can pick from. Now you can pick certain machines and target them here with an action. Now, one thing to note is that this is capped somewhere a fuzzy limit around 100 endpoints. You, this is not for doing, you know, like checking every machine in the environment, right? This is just for, you know, small batches up to 100 machines for deploying action from client status. That's been a long standing request. All right. It's great to see these things coming out. For sure. So, Joe, I heard now, I, I think our users are going to be really excited about this next feature because I know I am. Show us the new sensor editor experience. Because we have a lot of people here who write code. We've done shows about that. Let's look at the new sensor editor. So we're going to go into sensors. We hit edit. So the top of the, the sensor is laid out a little differently. That's cool. And refresh, that's nice. But now we go to the bottom. Wow. Just I mean, we could just stare and just sit and look at that for a while. Just that view. Look at that. It's like VS Code or any other popular editor out there. Now it's built in. You got syntax highlighting. You got the what do they call that nav pane on the right side? Is there a fancy word for that in designer land? That's almost like an inset or a, a legend, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is fantastic. So you've got syntax highlighting now in your sensor editor here. And of course, this is cross-platform as well with syntax highlighting for multiple languages. Absolutely gorgeous. Another enhancement I'll show is something that we've heard from customers. And I'll give you an example of this in Patch. Now, Patch is one of the modules in this environment is not yet in dark mode. But what we're doing is preserving filter state. So if I came to a list here, and let's filter this patch list. If I drill down into one of these items to review, now if I come back to my list, customers have asked that we preserve the filter state and you'll see that we've done that now. Now Patch is one of the first modules to introduce this new feature. And over time, you'll see this added to other lists like this across our platform. Man, that's good news. This is just all up usability and just eye candy and Tanium, wow. So Joe, like everything else in the world of software, I imagine there's a specific version that I need to get to to have this capability. What versions do we need to keep our eye out for? So the majority of our modules have been converted to dark mode already. This list shows the module versions that you'll need to see the module appear in dark mode. Now, if you don't upgrade a particular module, you can still see dark mode for the modules that you have chosen to upgrade. There's also four that are coming soon, but for the majority of the platform, you'll be able to see all of the experience in dark mode. So at the end of the episode today, I'm going to give you a link to the Tanium community site. You knew that was coming. And there you'll have an article that will give you all the versions to keep an eye on, which ones you'll need for this to be enabled in your environment. What else do you have as far as just wrap up comments, takeaways, things that you want to make sure people remember or take action on? So we'd love to hear what you think about dark mode. We hope that you enable dark mode and let us know what you think. We're always eager to hear about feedback from our customers and we love to iterate and help our user experience meet your needs. Uh, continue to look for new enhancements and additional efficiency gains 
as well as new workflows uh, that really enhance the user experience across the whole platform. Thanks, Joe, for joining us on the show today. And now what I want to do is just have a tribute to dark mode. Joe, thanks for this tour of dark mode. Okay, so some takeaways from today's show on dark mode. This is available today in your console. If you are in TAS, you have it now. If you're on-prem, you'll just need to upgrade to the latest console release. Actually, you'll upgrade to server and console to get this. Then the modules are mostly supported. There's just a few that aren't supported quite yet. You can get all those details in the community post that's linked down here at the bottom, that, that bit.ly link is case sensitive, Tanium Dart, capital T, capital D. Also, just remember you en can enable this under your user preferences, top right corner. And there's a ton of other goodness in the UI here for you to enjoy like that client status, being able to deploy action. People have been asking for that for a long time. Bulk editing of scheduled actions. There's even some, even some new accessibility enhancements that are there. So tons of goodness there. Go to the community article, Tanium Dark, and there you can find all the details. And also be sure to fill out the survey Joe mentioned. There will be linked in that post so, so that we can get your feedback. Your feedback is exactly what you saw on the console today. You're the one that drove this feedback. So keep giving us that feedback and we'll keep making it better. Also, a couple last quick shout outs. So I got an email some, from some folks in Singapore. So they've been enjoying the Gotanium Tech Talk. So a quick wave. Hey, Singapore, good to see you today. And then also, it, remember back on episode 13, we talked to Stephanie about certification we said it's going to be a multi-phase drop on the certs when they release. So the Tanium Certified Administrator is now available. So you want to check that out. So go out there, get Tanium Certified. And if you have any questions about training to earn that certification, you can always talk to your account team. So thanks again for joining us on Go Tanium Tech Talks today. And until next time, Go Tanium.